Bread making is something that I was always scared of for a long time. I've been cooking for 10 years now and I've always avoided breads because they always seem so complicated to me. But in the last year, I started to learn a lot more about, about bread making. Um, so I took this from a couple different recipes and, and worked around to get I was testing this bread out for like for, for months to get it right. So I just played around with a few different recipes and, and just came up with one on my own. And um, it's 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 like a cross between like a white bread and a brioche dough. It's a really simple recipe. It's like there's just um, flour, water, milk, eggs, and, and dry yeast. Okay, cool. Um, How much bread would you say you bake in a day? Well, it depends on the day, really. But okay. one of those is good for two people. So depending on how many uh, how many customers we do, on okay. Friday and Saturday, I have to make like thirty-five or forty. And the idea for the flower pot? I actually stole that from another restaurant a long time ago. There was a restaurant called Django in Philadelphia. It's not there anymore. It closed, okay. closed down a little while ago. But it's one of my favorite places, and they brought the bread out like that, and it just makes people smile when they see it. Okay. And I really like it. I think everybody does. And it's a great, it's a great way to cook bread because the clay is like an excellent conductor, and um, you know they're very inexpensive too. I bought these at Home Depot. It was the only place that that I could find them. Nice. And so one day I just I, I head up, headed over there and I bought two cases of flower pots. They were a little they they were a little bit concerned that I was buying them in the middle of the in the winter. <laughs> And did you have to do anything to the pots before you use them for baking, or no? Well, yeah, that's a good question. We, what I do, um, is is rub the inside with a little bit of oil, and then bake them in the oven once with nothing in them but just the oil, and that the oil will kind of um, like set into the clay. The clay is very porous, and it does take a lot of oil, so you, you do need to be pretty thorough when when you brush the inside of the oil, and then just bake it once, and then the oil will kind of set inside inside the clay and it'll always be there. Awesome. Also what you can do too is if, if um, you know if you don't want to is because once you put oil on it it stains the, the clay a little bit. You could also line the inside with some, some parchment paper. This is my recipe here. I scaled it down a little bit <coughs> um, to do a small small batch. It's basically two and a half cups of flour, um, one egg, a half a cup of water. Quarter cup of milk, one tablespoon of dry yeast, one tablespoon of sugar, and a half tablespoon of salt. So basically, you need um, you don't have to have it, but you it's, it's good to have a KitchenAid mixer or a stand mixer like like this to mix the bread. I have. We need it at the restaurant because we're doing such a large batch. You could do it by hand. So to get started, you just break the egg and then add add all the liquid, liquids together. The milk and the water into the egg, and then just mix it. It doesn't need to be very smooth because the mixer will take care of the rest. So then you start by adding all the, the dry ingredients into the mixer. So this is flour. This is just the flour. Just the flour. Just flour. You can use any type of flour for this bread. There's bread, different types of flour, like bread flour or high gluten flour, mm -hmm. which work a little bit better. But this isn't the type of bread that, you know, needs needs like a long fermentation. So an all-purpose flour will work as well. So this is the sugar, one tablespoon, and the dry yeast, one tablespoon, and also about a teaspoon or half a tablespoon of salt. Of salt. Okay. salt. So I'm just going to turn this on and the dry ingredients will start to mix together a little bit. Awesome. Just pour in all the wet ingredients. And let it go for about four or five minutes. Okay. Until, it's, until it, it, come, it comes together. So after the dough is mixed, you need to put it into a warm place for about an hour. And this is called the, um, the primary fermentation for the the bulk fermentation. Oh, nice. So this is the dough, the dough, and it pretty much du doubles in size. Like, wow. It really inflates like a balloon, and when you when you push into it, um, all the gas created by the the, the, the yeast will, will will be released, and it'll fall back down again. So bring it over to the table and uh, dump it out.
So then the next step is to portion the dough out into um, into equal pieces. So for this size flour pot, I need like about a seven ounce piece. But you can do it by eye, but it's always better to have to measure. Especially I'm assuming since you're putting it in a pot, you want to make sure. Yeah, and I just also, like, if, if it's a little bit short or a little bit over, that's okay, but it affects how the bread looks in, in the end. Okay. If, it's not, if it's not the correct size, then it won't inflate and it won't balloon out of the out of the pot. Okay. So then, after you have your, your seven ounce piece, you just basically stretch it out so the top side is smooth. turn it over and pinch together all the sides to close it up. So the seam of the dough will be in the bottom of it and you just seal it close like that. Okay. And you put it down and then just roll it over. So how do you come up with this technique? Just practice? Well, I mean, this is this is pretty pretty standard for, for making small loaves. Okay. Um, I'm not very good at it. This is like one of the first times I've, I've been doing this on a large large scale. So I'm, I'm still learning. Basically you just drop it inside the flour pot. Okay. And then after, we'll brush the top with a, li uh, a little bit of butter to prevent it from drying out. And what size flour pot are you using? This is, it's a four inch uh, flour pot. Okay. It, I'm not sure like exactly how much it holds, but the size is, is, is four inch. Okay, four inch. So then you just put it up in, into a warm place, like around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 78 or something like that. And then in about one hour, it'll it'll rise like that. Oh, wow. So in about an hour's time, it doubles in size again. Yeah, okay. it, it'll, it'll double in time. It can be anywhere, depending on the... Um, Depending on how warm it is, it can take up to two hours, you know, or like an hour and a half. But usually, about if if it's warm enough, an hour is just fine. Okay. Um, and then so af after it's done, we just brush it one more time again with butter, and then pop pop it in. And the oven should be set at. The oven. I think I found like 375 degrees is the best temperature. Um, it needs about about 20 minutes time to bake. It'll start to color in, in about 10 minutes, and then you should ch check on it and turn it around, and make sure it's getting brown evenly on both sides. Okay. One thing I learned with bread is that it always takes longer than you think. It appears done, but the inside is not because it browns quickly, oh, especially okay. since we put the butter butter on the top of it. But so it needs a good 20 minutes to be done. And it, it'll get um, like a deep, dark, uh, golden brown color. At the restaurant, we serve it with um, salted butter. Oh, okay. I think this this is the kind of bread that you really need to... I don't think olive oil would be the right choice for this one. I think this is kind of like a bread and butter type bread. Nice. Awesome. So we'll try. And it's 